Welcome to the instrument tutorial on some basic posture ideas. This tutorial can be used for violin or viola because they're similar in size and shape, especially here in middle school levels, since some of our violas are quite small to accommodate the size that you currently are. So as we go through, remember that violin and viola have similar tendencies, whether we're talking about the angle on the shoulder, the angle of the wrist, the placement of the elbow, or the curvature of our fingers. Enjoy and get ready for notes on the D string. We're going to cover a couple of things with the left hand. We'll be playing open D, first finger E, high second finger F sharp, third finger G. We don't want to leave out the pinky, so we're going to play fourth finger A. What we're going to pay attention to is how our fingers go on the fingerboard, what we have to think about with our wrist, where we place our elbow, and to make sure that the instrument is comfortable when we place it on the shoulder. So the first step is this. Make sure that your violin has the shoulder rest on. Not every professional violinist uses a shoulder rest, but many do. And especially here in the first few months of playing, we want to utilize the shoulder rest because it'll help support everything that's happening here between your shoulder and your jaw. So. Here we go. Instrument out, over, A button. Have that fly on in and make sure it's nicely and comfortably seated on top of your shoulder. A couple things to pay attention to. If you notice that your violin goes to an extreme angle, you'll want to adjust the shoulder rest or make sure that the instrument goes slightly further back on the shoulder. If your instrument drops at a severe angle, you're not going to be able to play. If your instrument goes way up, you're not going to be able to play. So we try to keep the instrument basically parallel to the floor. Terrific. Let's add our left hand, shall we? You've learned how to hold the instrument by the instrument. Now we're going to move our hand down the neck. Now you'll see when I move my hand down the neck that at this point I have to start thinking about different parts of my arm. I have my elbow. You'll notice it's pointing straight down to the ground. If my elbow goes to the front or if my elbow goes to the back, I can't use my hand the correct way. So it's very important that we're standing tall, and that our elbow is facing the floor. Another great way to think about this, pretend you have a glass on your left foot, and that water is being poured down your hand, down your arm, and dripping off your elbow and into that glass. This is a great way to remember where the elbow should be pointing. So make sure that the elbow is pointing straight down to that glass on your left foot. If you look at your wrist, you'll want to make sure that it is essentially neutral from the knuckles down to the elbow, not overcommitted out and definitely not overcommitted in. We don't want a broken candy cane. Give that one to your sibling. Go get yourself a new one and make sure that you have a nice round shape from your fingers to your wrist down to your elbow. Nice and round. We don't want this broken candy cane. We don't want this pain and destruction in your tendons. Make sure that the wrist is nice and relaxed and a natural shape from knuckles to wrist to elbow. So, we've thought about the wrist, we've thought about the elbow. Let's make sure we think about the fingers as well. You'll see from this angle that everything is rounded, the knuckles are rounded, nothing is flat, and nothing is at an extreme angle, round angles. So let's take a look here. We'll rotate and you'll see that my first finger as it is placed actually makes a square. It makes a square as we place the tip of our finger on the fingerboard. At this point, what I recommend is try to place all four fingers down on the fingerboard and take a look at what happens. Hopefully, you're on the tips of each finger. Some of you might notice that your fingers are flat or flattened. Make sure that you curve the knuckles and you come in from above the instrument. Here's a great time to make sure that your nails aren't four inches long. Keep those nails trimmed so you can play on the tips of your fingers. Terrific. Now take a look at your thumb. Is your thumb relaxed? Are you able to move your thumb? Is it bent in? Is it wrapped around? What's happening with your thumb? It definitely should not be squeezing the neck of the instrument. Okay, now that we have the three basics, elbow pointing down, wrist open, and tips of our fingers, let's place our fingers on the string. We're gonna start with open D. Remember that open is a synonym for no fingers down. We're just gonna have the open D string. Great. The next note is E. This confuses young violinists because they already know open E. We're not going to learn that one. We're going to learn a new place to play the note E. And this is with your first finger, your index finger, on the D string. 
So we're going to take our first finger and we're going to place it on our first tape. It's about an inch and a half away from the end of the fingerboard and you're going to place it on the tip of your finger. That note is first finger E. You'll notice that if I play first finger E, it sounds very similar to open E in that it matches. But obviously the open E is much higher. And the first finger E is much lower. So students often think, well, how do I tell which one I play? On the staff, the notes that are higher on the staff are higher on the instrument and therefore sound higher. The notes that are lower on the staff sound lower and are lower on the instrument. So we have open D, first finger E, and now we're going to place our second finger down on the tip of our finger on what's called F sharp. F sharp, ready, go. Hmm. Now you all know your alphabet. So we have D, E, F, G. Here's our third finger. It goes right next door to F sharp. Then after G comes the note A. Now this can be a big reach for your pinky. So make sure that your elbow is still pointing down and that your wrist is still open. You're gonna put your pinky down on the last stripe on your instrument. And this is fourth finger A. The reason we learn all four fingers is so that your entire hand can have the correct shape. This helps us to keep our wrist open and our elbow down and it teaches us how to place our fingers on their tips. It's also really great for ear training because you can play fourth finger A and open A. And you can tell if they sound the same. And if they sound the same, that's a word called in tune. So if we're in tune, the notes sound the same. And those are the four notes that we've added to our open D string. Open D, first finger E, second finger F sharp, third finger G right next door, hi best friend, and then fourth finger A. Thanks for stopping by. Happy practicing.